Hi, we're here with a cute kitty tutorial. It's a little amigurumi cat we have here. It's based on one I've made before, but he's slightly chunkier, a little bit smaller, and I think actually I prefer him. Now, basically, we have some double knit yarn of your choice. I've chosen grey because I, I just like the grey cats. I have some toy stuff in, my needle for sewing up. This you can use embroidery cotton. This is actually a thin crochet cotton to do his facial details. A couple of safety eyes, they're six millimeter ones. We have a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook, my scissors as usual, and I've got a pen because I have some paper to one side of me here. Because with this pattern, I think it is important you keep mark of what you are doing. And one thing I haven't put there, so keep still a second, is my stitch marker. Stitch marker important with this particular project. I'm going to use my cute kitty one that I used on my last one. Can you see that? It's a little porcelain one. It's one that I got from the Wool Monte. Um, I really need to find their card out so I can say. I know I did pop them on Instagram when I bought them, so I've got them there somewhere, but they are absolutely gorgeous. I've got little teapots and things like that from them. So those are the items we're going to need today. So I can move these to one side. I will move the eyes. I will not lose them. Pen to one side and scissors and my stitch marker there. And here's our little kitty and he can just sit. Where should we put him so you can see him? Can you see him there? Not quite. Let's lean him on the stuff in. He can sit and watch what we're up to. He doesn't want to sit up. All right, there we go. So, as I said, double knit yarn. Grey is my preferred choice, it doesn't have to be grey. Now this one, uh, unlike it is an amigurumi, but we are going to be starting in with two points rather than how we started before. So it's going to start with one ear. So we're going to, we've got a slip knot, I can't speak, slip knot on the hook there. We're going to make our two chain like I do with my amigurumi and we're going to do six double crochets into that space. That's three. five and six remember in UK terms so these would be um, US terms these would be single crochets but they are double crochets throughout there's no other stitch in this pattern we are going to go into each of those six with one double crochet so we've got one two three four five and six first couple of rounds are always the worst if you get past that point it's not so bad from there we're now going to do one little round for increasing so we need a little bit of shape for his ear now if it's starting to curl like that it gets difficult to do it so again i just use my little finger push it through and i can see my stitches a little bit better so i'm going to be doing two in one so that's my first increase it's two double crochets into the first stitch one double crochet into the second stitch two double crochets into the third, one double crochet into the fourth, two into the fifth, and one final one, the sixth, in we go. So now we've increased by three, so we've actually got nine stitches there. You see it's curling up again, but just push it out like that. Now, at this point, I'm actually going to cut this one off. And I'm also going to fasten it off. Now the next stage you don't have to do. I'm doing it more for clarity. I'm going to get rid of these ends now. Because it's I'm going to mean it's going to be stuffed. If you can work round them and they're not in your way, you don't have to get rid of them. It's just that for for you to be able to see it properly, I'm getting rid of them early. So I'm just going to thread them through a few times. It's not much to thread through, that's the problem when it's little. And I say you don't have to do this, I'm just doing it so you can see it better. One more time. That feels quite tight, so hopefully it's not going anywhere. Trim that one. And we're also going to get rid of this outer one. Because in a second we're going to do the second ear and we're going to join them together. That is the worst part of this pattern. Or the hardest part but it's not really hard but the yeah it's fiddly shall we say word fiddly all right so that's got rid of those two as well so all we're left with excuse me i'm just gonna cough <coughs> absolutely no idea where that's come from we're now just left with a single little ear 
which is okay let's we'll pop it down there i'm going to do my second ear the second one we don't fasten off because they're going to be joining together so slip knot on the hook two chain we're going to have six double crochet one two three four five and six checking that we have got the six one two three four five and six also tells me which my first stitch is just pull that tight you might I, you find i do it a few times as long as you know you close that hole up it doesn't really matter so just one in each again for our second round both ears are exactly the same So can you see how it sort of folds over it makes it hard for you to get into your stitch five and i'm just going to do one more and six right again i'm going to push it out with my little finger just so i can see the shape easier and this time we are going to have i don't know what that is it looks like it looks like a bit of filament it's not cat hair it's some sort of filament i've got craft bits all over the place right so we've got two in our first one one in our second two in the third stitch one in the fourth so we're alternating two in the fifth and one in that sixth one so again you see i'm tightening you might not need to i just have a habit of doing it so we have our second little ear we've now got to join them together i'm going to do two chain because we need a slight gap between the two ears you can join them quite close but i prefer to have a gap for them so two chain i'm going to pick up our second ear and into any any of those stitches i'm going to do a double crochet so you can see i've joined the two together yep so what i'm going to do now i'm going to go all the way around this one along those two chain all the way around the other one and back along the two chain that is one round so it's a little bit hard to explain this one this is why i haven't done a pattern because too many people um word it differently and i think it's hard for people to sort of get the gist and not everybody chooses to read patterns or they find they don't like reading patterns i mean there's certain patterns i've had a real issue with so i do understand that completely so i've just gone around the first ear can you see but it's pushed in so i'll push it back out again i've got to the chain those two chain i'm actually hang on i'm going to go in one more there so you're trying to get in the middle of a chain like as if you were doing your first row 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 it's because i was trying to say round and row at the same time then but we're just two chain remember it's two chain so i just want two stitches across that bridge and then i'm going to go around this one this is only the second ear we've gone round so just into every stitch of the second ear again it's turning inside out because my fingers are pushy not it turn it back so we're almost there so this is round the second ear let's pull my yarn up a little bit right so that's my last stitch in my second ear i now need to go across those two chain if you can get in the other a half of the chain that's fine but basically just try and find a stitch so we only want two make sure you do only put two in there so we're round one now we can put the stitch marker in here it, it's a bit fiddly so we need two more rounds and it'll be easy peasy so i'm going to put it in there okay so i know i've done one complete round and also joined the ears together so we're going to do just a double crochet round so you don't need to count don't worry about how many you've got as long as you just do one double crochet into every stitch until you get round to that stitch marker I think it's the same with any crochet or well any knitting i suppose any crafting really that first set off point is always a little trickier as soon as you get through sort of part way it all seems to feel a little bit easier but because we're joining two items together it makes it a little bit harder so 
to the middle there, get that out of the way. And you see why I got rid of those other ends now? Because they'd have been hanging out as well and it would, would have sort of made it very hard for you to see, then it would have obscured the view. Right, so we're back round to the stitch marker. So you can see we've got two little ears forming there. So we're going to go round again. We do have a few double crochet rounds here. So we've just got one more before I have an increase, but there will be a lot of just these double crochet rounds. So one more until we get round. So one double crochet into each of the stitches. It should be starting to feel a little bit easier to hold now. I think that is the problem when you first start. It's the setting off. You're only trying to hold a tiny bit of yarn or a tiny bit of uh, crochet and that makes it difficult. Whereas now we have got the whole thing. It's easier to hold. As I've mentioned before, if you think I'm going a little bit fast, you can actually slow me down in the settings. But as I have mentioned before, it might be worth um, reducing the sound if you're going to do that because it doesn't just slow down the image, it slows down the speech. So I sound a little bit weird. Oh, if you want a complete giggle, you can speed it up and see what it sounds like. Right, so we're round again. Now, because I'm not doing a pattern for this, I don't want you to overthink what we're doing next. What I want you to do is I want you to increase four times around this round. So basically, if you think you need one about here, one here, one here, and one here evenly. If you want to sit and do the counting, you can do, but I don't want you to get hung up about it. I'm a bit of a nightmare for that, I must admit. But... So I'm going to go for two there, because that was where I started. All right. I'm going to wait until I get to the side of his ear. And by increasing, all I'm going to do is put, I'd say that's about the side, in fact, maybe one more. About there, Look, that looks in line with his ear, so I think that's suitable. I'm going to do two double crochets into that single space, so it gives us an increase. We're going to go round until I get to the centre of him. I am classing this as the centre, I'm classing the stitch marker as the back. So I think maybe the next one, two stitches in the next one. These increases only happen this once, so that's why I'm not overly worried. As long as they're approximately even, evenly spaced. So seem to be about there, mid side ear again, and two stitches. Just double crochet now around to our stitch marker. There isn't really a right front or a back. I just used the stitch marker as my marking point for the back that was on. Right, so round we go. There we are. So you can really see now how we're getting these two little ears sticking up. I'm going to move my stitch marker up because it's a little bit low there. So it feels a bit awkward. Now the next bit is where we need that pen and paper really. Because I would recommend you do mark down where you're going. To be honest, you could just guess some of it. I mean, if you look at his body, you could sort of think, oh, well, I'll take him to about there or I might make him a longer body. That is one thing with crochet. It's very adjustable. Again, depending on your tension, that can make a big difference as well. But what we're actually going to do now is I am just checking my rounds. I'm going to be doing four just one double crochet into each one so bear with me while i do that one so it's just one double crochet into every single double crochet round Again, if you know what you're doing, you can fast forward a little bit here because the next section I will be doing, if you're wanting to fast forward and be able to see where I'm going to be doing the next bit, is popping his eyes in. So you will see as you fast forward in that I've got to the eye section. So remember this is four double crochet rounds. Nearly round on the first one. Again, why we've got pen and paper is we can mark it off and keep an eye on where we are when we're talking 
or even if you're watching the TV. Right, I'm going to put that down. That's my first one. So I need another three of those. So I'm just going to keep going. And so by all means, pause it or fast forward it while you do this little bit to catch up. You may have even got there before me. I know people have said that I am quite fast when I'm doing this. I have seen people that are a lot faster though, so I'm probably somewhere in the middle. I don't try and rush, I like to try and relax, but I think the more you do it, you get that you get quicker naturally anyway. And it's took a number of years to get to this point. Nearly round for number two. Right, so that's number two. And as I said, I'm going to mark it down. So that's two. I need two more rounds and then we'll be popping in those safety eyes. Now, if you don't want to use safety eyes, that's fine. I actually used this uh, design and made some uh, little hats for the dolls. And I use buttons because you can't use safety eyes for hats because it would get in the way of the head, obviously. So I use little round buttons and they look really cute. You could use beads. But as I do mention, be careful because you have to think about who the person is going to get this. Really, most of my items I make, I class them as collectible. I do not think that they are suitable for really young children. I mean, I've got a four year old granddaughter and I've, she's more than I am more than happy for her to have my items. Uh, but you'll know your own children or your own uh, recipients. So please be careful. Make sure that the items are safe. That's number three. Also be careful what safety eyes you buy. Some of them are not very good. I've had a few on kits and they've been appalling. They've actually snapped. Um, it's, you know, no point calling something a safety eye if it's going to break off and if a child does get hold of it or a dog gets hold of it and they actually swallow it. That's not very good at all. You can see the shape of his little head come in now. It doesn't take long. It might be a little tedious going round and round. Don't recommend you do it when you're tired. I've done that before now and nearly fallen asleep. I've almost hypnotised myself as I've been going round. Just checking that I am staying in the centre. I think I'm being quite good at the moment. It's just a funny position I have to sit in to do it. Right, so that was my fourth round. So as I said, I'm going to class that as my back. You don't have to. So I'm going to have a look where his eyes are going now. Oh, it's fallen over, bless him. So I've mentioned they were six millimetre ones. You can use bigger ones. It's entirely up to you what sort of look you're going for. So let me think. I think, I think around there. Remember, if you want little whiskers and that, don't take it too wide, otherwise you'll not get your whiskers in. You can double check before you fasten them off. I think that's about right. I'm quite happy with that. So now I'm going to pop these backs on. Make sure, for this particular one, it's dome up. So I'm pushing it with the dome at the top. A little bit fiddly. There we go. Keep still. So I've got you near here. It click. Click. One two three okay depending on the size they will all be slightly different i've wasted a quite a few of these with practice unfortunately that was a little click then oh it's sliding keep still one two there we go don't do it too tight because otherwise it digs into the yarn and that's not very attractive either but then you'd also don't want a gap that's sort of where it's sticking out. You need to make sure they are on nice and solidly. Right, we're going back to just double crochet rounds. Now his eyes are in, he's in a fixed position, so that's all good. And there's actually six rounds here. So once again, if you're wanting to fast forward, I am tempted to fast forward the videos when I'm doing it, but I do understand that some people like to crochet actually along at the same time so if i suddenly speed the video up 
that's that's not very fair on them so i'm going to leave the speeding up and slowing down to yourselves and then um, everybody gets a choice of how they want to do it could have perhaps done with a different color background couldn't i on here i know he's against my hand but he's also oh, don't want to get that stitch he's also against the gray took some cute photos of him earlier so i'll be popping a couple of them up and obviously on my instagram and facebook if you'd like to have a nosy at what i get up to that's round one i would have said again i'm marking off because i am chuntering as well can you see what i say about a doll hat i got to that point and i thought oh it's a cute little hat Something I've not made many of though. I do need to make some for my Etsy. But at the moment, Halloween is taking over a little bit. I've got quite a few orders of little tiny witch hats, which I'm loving doing. But it means Halloween has to take precedence over anything else. But I will get some of the little pussycat hats out soon. Mind you saying that, we get Halloween out of the way and it's Christmas, isn't it, before we know it. So it's going to be Santa hats then and elf hats and lots of little bits like that you don't really need to move the stitch marker now you can do if you want but it's a pro well you can see that it's between his ears where your rounds sort of finish so to be honest, you can use your eye rather than the stitch marker. I'll just leave it in there then. It just reminds me which the back is, I think, more than anything. Because it's easy to get sort of halfway and you look at the other side and you're halfway between the ears. Although I've got eyes in now, so that's a bit daft for me to say, isn't it? I think I might notice which is his front and which is his back. Not sure on the time scale. Uh, of making this because I didn't time myself earlier because I part started it and then I put it down to go and do something else so I didn't time it at all I think possibly an hour-ish some of you might be quicker some people will take a lot longer I'm inclined to do mine in stages so if you like me um, unless you stop and start a clock to know what you're doing you could be taking a couple of hours to do a project because you've got up and done something else but if you're wanting to get these out as little gifts i think it now is the time to start doing that so that's our third round as i said we've got six you can see them shaping up there so we're on our fourth round now so it's not really took long i think a few minutes to get to our fourth round you note I've not really said how many stitches you've got because I'm not overly worried um, if I've got one extra or one less in this particular design it's not going to make anything any difference at all I think it looks quite cute if they're slightly different as well Did I say this is the fourth? I did, didn't I? See, again, because I've written it down, I could look over and double check. Just thinking what else he could be at this. I'm just thinking like, quite a cute... Maybe the eyes wouldn't work. You'd have to do button eyes, but I'm sort of seeing a little egg cosy. That'd be quite cute, wouldn't it? He's approximately that size. I think that'd fit over an egg. But you couldn't do your safety eyes then, you would have to do your buttons. Or you could do felt eyes if you're worried about buttons coming off. Um, if you can cut some tiny circles or if you have a die cutter, you can cut some, um, the die cutter can do your tiny circles. And stitch, I think, is a better option if you're worried about things coming off. But if it is more sort of ornamental or for um, an adult for, or for just somebody who collects, um, you, I think maybe glue you could get away with. I just don't personally like to glow unless I have to. There are the other occasions you don't have a choice.
there we go that's number five so we've only got one more round so i'm not going to write that down because i know i'm on my last one you could make a long sausage one that'd be quite funny in fact i might do one of those sort of like a cushion for one of the dolls just make it with a really long body Can you hear that rattling? It's a stitch marker as I'm going round. I might move it after this row. It's not too irritating, but I don't know whether it's sort of making a lot of noise because it's quite near the, the microphone. Couple more and we are there for that part. Right, so I'm going to take this stitch marker out, as I say, because it is, well, it's not rattling, it's just making a funny little noise as it as it's sort of shaking. So I'm going to pop it over there so you don't have to listen to it. So we've done our six rounds now. Now I'm going to now move on to a bit of decreasing. I'm just going to turn a page over here because I'm on the totally wrong page there. Right, here we go. So we've got almost the length. Yeah, it looks fatter, don't it? I think when they're flat they look wider than they actually are so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two stitches together just a quick reminder you go in pull through we don't complete the stitch we go into the next stitch pull through we have three on the hook and we pull them all through together I'm going to do five stitches I'm going to do two together so in pull through one in pull through two pull through all three I'm going to do another five. One, two, three, four, five. Two together. And five. One, two, three, four, and five. Again, another two together. So we're starting to pull him in underneath his bottom. So we've got one, two, three four and five so when you're off center back maybe one stitch out again that's not the end of the world because all we're going to be doing next is doing two double crochets together or continually round until we've closed up obviously remember to stuff before you actually close up that may sound silly but i have done it so i've had to undo some of it so this is just Two togethers, two togethers, two togethers, two togethers, all the way round as the hole slowly closes itself up. And we are near enough finished with our kitty. The only extra bit of crochet we do need is to do his tail. Now, I've actually made a tail already for this one. So I'm just going to tell you how to do it because I want to show you how to sort of pop it on there more than anything else. Remember to keep these two together quite tight, otherwise you can end up with little holes as it gets smaller. Right, I think that hole's quite small now. I think I need to get some stuffing done. I would recommend you go in and with a small piece of stuffing and stuff each ear first because they are not easy to get to. And if you just pile the stuffing in, it will not go in the ears. Now I know that's in the ear. So I'm going to take another piece for the other side and push it in until it's right up inside his ear that's lovely so now I can take a larger piece with your stuffings I again watch for the quality you're buying you need to make sure they are a toy grade stuffing you need to make sure it does pass all the, all the safety standards required as well because uh, you don't want to be making a hazard for somebody you see oh it's coming together nicely I think maybe one more bit of stuffing I've pushed it up so he looks extra fat up there because when we're finished I'll allow it to come back down again because I don't like it near the crochet because it makes it difficult and you get little bits of fluff everywhere actually in your work if you're not careful. So that will all flatten out in a minute. So I'm going to carry on just two double crochets together. Now this is where it starts to get a bit more fiddly and this is where it's important that you keep it tight. 
the two together pull it tight make sure I'm staying where I'm meant to for this two together pulling it tight nearly there so or maybe a couple more if you think you haven't got enough stuff in at this point as well this is your last chance hotel make sure you get some in there right i'm going to say that's about it now as you say it looks sort of fat rather than long but that will alter when i do the next bit just in time look there was a knot so i'm going to fasten that off give him a little roll about and you can see his shape then comes so they're almost identical in size these two so i'm just going to thread these through a little bit just get rid of that end You don't want bits of yarn coming back through when you're finished. So I like to push it through quite a few times and just clip it off. Again, give him another little roll because sometimes when you're sewing, you can pull it tight. Now, this is the tail. This, all this is, is, in fact, I'll show you the very first bit, but then I don't want it, you to have to sit and watch me do it. So just slip knot like normal. Two chain, like we've done. Six double crochets into that first one exactly like we started the ears four or not four five and six so you've got your starting point there and then all you're going to do is one double crochet into every single double crochet round and round and round and round and round don't worry about counting look at the actual length that you're working with we're looking at between anything between 15 and 20 rounds watch for catching your stitches up because that can be a pain too so i've left that open because i do want to put a little bit of stuffing in now popping stuffing in something like that is isn't easy i do like to use my scissors i use my very sharp embroidery scissors for my tiny stuff and it just pushes it in just mind your fingers as you're doing it a little bit more i think you'd be surprised how much stuff in these things take sometimes there we go i think that's about right now the tail is useful in this situation because it helps him sit up because like that it's sort of a bit lopsided he sort of sits up but it's not very good really so i'm going to take the tail end that i've left on the tail and I'm actually going to stitch this end together, just over like that. Yeah. I'm going to the centre of the back. Decide which way you want his tail to come round. Is it coming round that way or that way? It does matter. I'm going to take it so it goes round that way because that bit's going to sit flat in the middle of his back. So I'm just going to stitch it on. A few stitches, nothing fancy. Little knot in that last one, or not, it doesn't want to. No, not for not, that's because the yarn got stuck. I'll do it on the next one. Make sure you don't catch the ends. There we go. And then what I'm going to do is I'm not going to stitch it all the way along, I'm going to push it in and come out roughly where it's going to finish. Yeah. So I'm not having to thread up or knot or anything else like that. So it's definitely not going to go anywhere. So I'm going to put it round and his tail's about there. And all I'm going to do is pick up a couple of stitches. One. Two. You see how it's held in place? You don't really need to do any more. And a little knot in a second. Let me get my yarn long enough for that knot. Do it slowly because otherwise it knots early and then like before push it through however many times you feel 
is required for it to be secure. Usually mine's between three and four. So again, we've squashed him a bit. Give him a little squish down. So let's see if he stands. Yep, he stands quite nicely there. So the last thing I think really we want to look at is his facial features. And now I'm just looking where on earth I put my needle. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. It's quite simple. But I think effective. If you're really good with the fancy embroidery, you can do lots of things on crochet. But I'm trying to thread the needle at the moment. I don't think sometimes it's necessary. So as I mentioned before, this is actually a crochet cotton rather than a wool. You can use embroidery thread, but I do think the embroidery thread does have a tendency to split and doesn't hold as well. Little knot. Let's trim that little tail off the knot because I don't want that. And I'm going in from the back of his head. I'm going to go for this eye first. So I'm going to come in at the side of his eye. So I'm going to take it up. And I think about there. Make sure that knot's gone through fully. Again, if it oh, you see how it's sticking out a bit. I just pop my scissors in. Squish it in and it's gone. So the first ones are sort of quite flat at the side of his eye. So I think I'll go about there and then just I've only got up one stitch. And I'm coming back inside that one. But before I go anywhere, I want to come up like that between his eyes. Did I? So we've got one set of whiskers. And then his mouth, it goes down, it goes up. And back down. I'm going to go back to the centre point. I'm going to go back down and up. So all we're getting is like a little W shape. Now I know I want to pop over here now so I'm not going to keep re-threading up yarns. So side of his eye, approximately the same as that one. I'm just turning him upside down so I can see my positioning. I'm going in, up one stitch. So one whole stitch and then in. And that's it. Nice, quick and easy. Nice little chunky cat. You can do in lots of different colours. I had considered doing a black one with it being Halloween coming up. But it's not my favourite colour yarn to work with. And I think it's very difficult to demonstrate. Again, I'm just going through a few times because I certainly don't want his facial features coming undone. So I will give it a little trim there. That shouldn't go anywhere. And there he's got a friend. So we've got two little chunky cats there. The stripy one would look great. Use a variegated yarn or something like that for a little ginger one. That'd be cool if you've got like a yellowy orangey colour. That'd be lovely to make that. So I'm really pleased with those. I hope you followed that. I haven't done a written pattern because I don't think it's necessary for this particular design. If you have any problems, give me a shout. Yeah. Just send me a message, say if you're a bit worried about anything that I've done or you've misunderstood or you don't understand. Because as I say, everybody uses different terms. So just let me know and hopefully you'll get on and make some little kitties. If there's some of the, you that follow me on Instagram and Facebook, if you do do some little kitties or on Twitter, please tag me with them so I can have a look because I do love seeing what people have actually done. So hope you enjoyed that. Please like, subscribe and share. And don't forget that little notification bell at the bottom. Give it a ring if you're wanting to see my patterns or my creations as I actually go. So hope to see you soon. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.